Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham with your co-host, Grace O'Donnell, and me, Art Bergeron. Uh, our guest today, Lisa Urshkernis, the Social Services Director at the Callahan Center. Stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm Art Bergeron, her co-host. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. In uh, uh, I'm actually with my offices in Westboro. But this is not about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've ever seen my presentations, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's you, that means you want to know how you can do that right here in Framingham. So the question is, who are the people that you need to know and what are the programs that you need to know about in order to stay right here in Framingham for the rest of your life? Um, one of the reasons why I've got this fabulous co-host, Grace O'Donnell, is she knows all those people uh, who know about all of those programs. And, we're, we're, and I know that we have a wonderful guest today whom Grace has had before who just knows just a ton about everything about this. So Grace, whom do we have today? Hi, Arthur. Our guest today is Lisa Ushkernis, our very own social services director. She's going to talk to us today about programs that help people 60 and older save money. Programs like Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, shortened to SNAP, the um, Healthy Incentives Program, which is shortened to HIP, and the Farmer's Market Coupons. Sounds great. Lisa, welcome back. Good to be here. And I was, and we were just talking before the program. It'll be so great to see you in person again. I'm just going to stop over one of these days just to say hello, just to see real people. It's that would you know, be good. Coming soon. Coming soon. So, Lisa, can you tell us um, what is it about supplemental nutritional assistance program that people should know, and how do they qualify, and how do they sign up for it? Okay. Um, many people think that they don't qualify for all kinds of benefits or they're feeling that other people need more than they need. So they don't go ahead and ask the questions that they should be asking. Um, if somebody comes into my office or they call us on the phone and their financial circumstances have changed, they got laid off from a job, um, their roommate moved out, they have a death of a loved one. So there's a, one income. We try to look at their situation and frequently we'll try to get somebody on SNAP benefits. Um, you have to have a pretty low income. It's by number of people in the household. Um, I'm able to do it on a computer very quickly. I can also talk on the phone with somebody to see if they meet the criteria for how, many, how much money you can have a month and deduct the housing expenses. And if you have um, pharmacy expenses and co-pays, I can get a pretty good idea if they would qualify. If they do, then I do the application with them online. It gets submitted and then they automatically get a small card, a SNAP card, which looks like a credit card. They get that in the mail automatically. They'll get a phone call from an interviewer who will interview them on the phone to verify the information that I've collected and put into the computer and submitted. Um, and then once it's decided that yes, you meet the criteria, they then load your card with whatever amount of you would qualify for. $125 is the average is what I understand to get a SNAP card. Um, every Meaning, two years, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, does that mean the individuals get 120, up to $125 each month? Yes, that's oh. the average, yeah. That's pretty good. I, be I bet that good. would help stretch some people's food dollars. Yeah. Yes. And, and then the money that you do have, you have to buy paper products and, you know, personal items. It only covers, you know, food, which is a good thing. Um, all the grocery stores take it. Um, it's helpful if you have a home health aide or a family member. They can also be allowed to be on your card. Um, as somebody that can go to the grocery store and use your card to get you groceries. If you're homebound, for example, your home health aid, 
um, your son, a neighbor can take your card with permission and there's a whole way to do it and they can shop for you, which is really, which is really good. It's, and it's I a understand. wonderful program. And, and once again, for the folks who are watching, for, first of all, remember now, these, these are your tax dollars at work and, you, and you, these are your tax dollars at work. And, 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 and you're, you're not in charge of figuring out who's eligible for these programs. For you, so for you to say, oh, well, I, sh I really shouldn't be eligible. That's like doing your tax return and getting to the bottom and saying, wow, I don't know any tax, but I really think I should throw some money in. You know, I mean, it just I think it's the right thing to do. No, that's not your job. Your job as a good American is you pay your taxes, you pay your bills, and then any benefits, you know, it's like it's like turning back the fire department when they show up at your house because you don't think you're paying enough in taxes. Give me a break. You know, you, it, it, so that's the first thing. Second thing, don't say no to yourself. Don't assume that you don't qualify. Lisa can tell you if you qualify. If you talk to her and you find out you don't qualify, there's no penalty for not qualifying. You're not going to it's like not you didn't qualify. Now you owe us fifty dollars. No, you know. <laughs> It's just, you know, so, so don't say no to yourself. Let Lisa figure this out. This is, you know, this is your, she is your tax dollars at work. That's, That's why she's correct. there is to help you out. Okay. Well, that is correct. Well said, Arthur. Right. Yep. There yeah. are people um, who don't qualify for SNAP who may perhaps fall, qualify for fuel assistance. You can have a higher income. So if you don't qualify for SNAP, there might be some other uh, programs, discounts that the city has, um, or the fuel assistance that you would qualify for. So we try to look at the whole picture and see how we can be helpful for you. And, and that's the thing, Lisa, as the director of social services has been doing this job for uh, 11, Ever. 12 years right. and Ever. many Ever. years before that. So she is very well versed on all of the programs that people can access to make things easier for them. We've all seen prices of things increase so much in the last year. And this is a way that can help you continue to eat healthy, but not spending all of your income for food. You can then use some of that income for some other necessities like medications or to pay that high fuel bill. So Lisa, can you tell us a bit about the farmer's market coupons? Sure. Um, this is a program that's been around for a while. Um, every July, I get issued um, about 70 farmer market coupons. They're for people who have SNAP benefits or are eligible but don't have SNAP um, to go to a local farmer's market. You can go to Natick, Ashland, Framingham, and it's $25 worth. I always suggest that people wait wait a little bit until there's more produce available for you to select from um, and spend that money. Um it's good because you can go get some fresh fruit and vegetables. And again, your home health aid or a family member could use your farmer market coupons with your permission to go there. You can't buy, you know, kettle corn. You can't buy, you know, that kind of thing. But it has to really be fruit and vegetables uh, for the most part. It's $25. It doesn't go far. But, but it's things you may not choose to buy because you don't want to spend the money because you don't have a whole lot of money. So you're happy to buy some good pieces of fruit, even though they're a little pricey, because you deserve to have them and they're healthy for you. Yep. Um, we get them in July. We never know when we're going to get them. Bay Path Elder Services distributes them to myself at the Callahan Center. Framingham Housing Authority, Jewish Family Service, and some other entities also get uh um, farmer market coupons to distribute to their clientele. And we all sort of know who's working with who. So there isn't often any duplication. It's one per household. Um, so if you have friends that live with you or your daughter lives with you, you still only get one farmer market coupons for $25. That's what I wanted to clarify. It's one booklet that booklet, is sorry, $25 yes. worth. And I know in the last few years, the farmer's markets have uh, combined with DTA in forming this other program called the Healthy Incentives Program. So it actually, if you can explain how that sure. gives people back even more money into their account, right. I think that is something that many people are not aware of right. and it could it, help. It really, them. it's a terrific program. It makes complete sense. Um, you have to look for an HI HIP logo at the farmer's market. Whoever the vendor is that you're going to, they have to have some... Um, logo that says HIP. 
And what that means is whatever you purchase there, it could be $15, it could be $30, that goes right back onto your SNAP card to use for other healthier food for you to buy. It's, it's, it's brilliant. I wish more people would know about it. The important thing is to ask if you don't see the HIP logo, you could ask and they may say, you know, we don't do that program, but the, you know, the lady over there, the guy over there, that vendor, you know, they have that. And if you go, you know, frequently, you'll know what vendors have HIP. And again, you can go to any farmer's market in Massachusetts um, that you choose to go to. They're all different days and times. Um, Framingham's is on Thursdays, usually. I expect it to be again on Thursdays. Um, Natick is Saturday, Ashland is Saturday. Um, so people talk and they know where the good good vendors are. Or they have a vendor that they see every year that they can't wait for the farmer's market to open up because they're going to see Tony because Tony's got good vegetables. <laughs> Now, what now? Now, once again, Grace, let me just throw in one little promo here. Now, remember about this program. It is there to help you. But you know who it's really there to help? The farmers. Yeah. This is a big deal. You if you you go and, and what you're doing by using this benefit, right, is you're helping all the local farmers. And that's a great thing because, you know, your SNAP benefits, you think that those were designed for you. No, they were designed for the big agribusinesses that sell all these goods. That's the, you know, that's the, the, the big lobby for these things in Congress is the Department of Agriculture. So, you know, you're spending at the grocery store to support these gigantic farms. Through what Lisa just explained, you get to take some of those very dollars and help your local farmers. And in return, you get really local food. So it's just like a really, so, you know, it isn't like anyone's doing you a favor. You are doing the farmers a favor by doing this, all right? Yeah, and of and of all places, Framingham, the the name for the what was the town, really had to do with being farming. It was a farming ham. It was a oh. farming town. So of all communities that should be helping to support the farmers markets through this HIP program, I think every Framingham resident should embrace that. Who knew? That is true. That is an amazing <laughs> yeah. piece of trivia. Oh, that's so good. Farming you, you can use the coupons until the beginning of October. Um, and the other thing I didn't mention is if you buy something for um, $8 and you have two $5 coupons like Monopoly money, they're not going to give you a dollar back. They're going to say can, you could take a peach. You could take a cucumber. <laughs> but they don't give you any change. Um, you can also add in, you know, your 30 cents so that you spent accordingly. Um, but people are really flexible with that. Yeah. The, the other thing I wanted to ask about the hip, Lisa, is there any limit to how much you can get put back on your card for each of those purchases? I can look at my notes. <laughs> I'm actually not I, sure. I don't think there was. Oh. I think however much you spend on it, they will essentially put that right back onto that EBT card. So even though you're correct. spending, say, $10 at that farm stand, if they have that HIP logo, you will then, when you look at your, your benefit statement, you will see, you know, I still have that $10 back and I can use that either for this farmer or for some other purchase with the EBT. And if you bring somebody with you, a neighbor or a friend, a family member, you know, they can carry all the bags for you. If, if you know, corn on the cob can be heavy, but if you really love corn on the cob, you want to get six or eight, <laughs> um, they'll be gone in two days. But if you have somebody to go with you, they can carry your heavy bags for you yeah. um, with whatever you buy for produce. Lisa, can you give me an example of someone that you've helped in the last year or so with this, somebody who didn't think they were eligible, but it has made a difference for them? Um, there's a lot of people I can think of. I always think about the person who had two incomes and one person passed away or they went to a nursing home and they now have one income and they have to deal with their water bill, the oil bill, taxes, um, and they need to eat and they need to have their medication and they need to have a little bit of money to socialize with other people and everything dramatically changes. And so we really try to work with people to look at how we can be helpful with SNAP or fuel assistance or a food pantry to go to or one of the city um, discounts that seniors are able to um, secure. Um, that's mostly the, pers the person I would want to tell you about. Lately, there's people, though, who have lost their jobs. Um, 
people have been furloughed and laid off and then the company where they work for is not quite the same design. And so you kind of let go of and your unemployment ends and you're really in a pickle. Come and if you're over 60, come and see us and we will try to see how we can be helpful for you. Yeah, great. That sounds terrific. Um, I, I know that for some people, they think, oh, there's so much paperwork I need to fill out. But you've already explained a lot of this. You can help with them even just over the phone. Yes. And um, for seniors, they actually simplified the way to apply yes. for SNAP so that it's not nearly as difficult as it used to be. And if I recall, when someone applies for SNAP now, if they are um, decided to be eligible, they are, they are actually on that program then for two years before yes. they need to renew. So mm-hmm. that's a good amount of time for people to see how this program helps them. And, you know, people can choose to come off it at any time that they want. But as you mentioned, having some money, more money going towards their food means they can use that other money to pay their oil bill, to pay that property tax bill or whatever else. So another thing you might want to think about is if you happen to go to rehab and you're not living at home and you're not using your your SNAP card, it's okay because the money stays there for the following month. So when you return home, somebody in your family or a friend or home health, they could do a big grocery shop for you because you have more money on it because you didn't spend it that month because you were in rehab. And that's terrific. That's great. That, that's an important thing that maybe a lot of people don't realize that that would still be available to mm-hmm. them. And I know you help walk people through the process. If they have high medical bills, they can actually be eligible for even more as long as they are at the base level of being eligible. If they have high medical costs, even if it's high out-of-pocket expenses for mm-hmm. their pharmacy bills or they had to go to the doctor a lot this year, those high medical bills can make them eligible for even more benefits yes. on SNAP. Yeah. And we encourage people, you know, they can get a printout from the pharmacy. They can get a printout from their insurance company, how many co-pays they had to pay to go to a specialist, you know, that's 75 or a hundred dollars. Sometimes um, all that adds up and why not, why not put it into the formula? It's coming out of your pocket. So you want to be able to get it back somehow and you can get it back through SNAP. Yeah. Yeah. It's a terrific benefit that a lot more people are eligible for it than make use of it. And as I like to remind people, these programs were put in place because people realize when people retire, most of them are on a fixed income and their money won't go as far as when it was increasing year after year because they're, they were getting salary increases. And so there were people who had the wisdom to realize we need to sort of have a safety net for people whose circumstances change and whose other expenses start growing more and more so that they need another, a little bit of help to just keep them going. And as you mentioned earlier, Arthur, it also helps to benefit um, the farmers, uh, especially f- using those farmer market coupons and that HIP program. So you're not only helping yourself, you're helping a lot of other hardworking people out there who are really just trying to keep all of us healthy by growing good food and making it available uh, for people to come and pick their own. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to add in, in the old days, you had coupons and people knew that you had food stamps. It's now called SNAP and it's a credit. It looks like a credit card. Nobody knows your circumstances. You just swipe it. And if you do it two or three times, you're going to love it. It's easy to do. And you'll be really freed up to shop, grocery shop. Use your SNAP card. Yeah. That's right. And and apply for it. (laughs) Apply for it. Yeah. So do do you have any sense, Lisa, of, of, like how many people are, are, are using these benefits now versus how many might be eligible for them? I was just curious if the government does any, <laughs> any statistics on that stuff. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Grace in. I, I have absolutely no idea how to evaluate that. The people that we don't know who qualify, we don't know who they are. No, I, I it's understand. always challenging. I recall seeing something, and, and don't quote me on this, yeah. but I know it's something like at least... 48 or more percent of people who are eligible for SNAP don't even apply for it. Don't even apply. So 
this money is there and it's not like anyone is taking this away from someone else who's making even less money. There's a lot of people who aren't using it. So if you qualify, why not make use of it and then use your other hard earned money for other purposes where there isn't a safety net? That's that's what I would encourage people to do. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't add to our tax base. This is money that is already built in. So um, I, I and for some people, you know, when it comes down to, well, do I do I get this? organic uh, fruit or vegetable, or do I pay for my um, prescriptions? You know, that's quite something that they have to give some real thought to. And this might take that question and that concern out of the equation for them. Right. Right. Yeah. So now I don't know if we have time for this, Lisa, but, but can you, if I I can, I'm genuine, I don't know. And this is up to grace, but if you have time, I'd, I'd be genuinely interested we're kind of pulling out of the pandemic. You're dealing with folks all the time. Can you just talk about how things are changing in terms of what you're doing at the Callahan Center, in terms of the volume of people? Are you seeing more people at home? Kind of what, and, 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 and looking forward to the summer, what are you kind of anticipating now? I know it was for so long, it was like week to week, you had no idea, right? It was like, oh, yes. you know, stay tuned, we'll see, yeah. right? Um, what's happened to many people is, their rent has gone sky high. They've gotten a rent increase of 150 to 175 dollars a month. They like where they live. They don't want to move anywhere else. They could go to senior housing, but that's a very long process to get into it. And they're really stuck because they don't have the extra money to pay towards their rent. And right. so they're really having a hard time, a lot of anxiety. How can I swing this? How could this be happening to me? Um, sometimes a house gets sold and, and family members jack up the rent because there's all these new apartments around, you know, town and they're commanding a very high rent. Um, and so it's OK to raise the rent because other people have high rents that they're paying. Right. And that puts people in a really awful position. They live somewhere their whole life. They like their neighborhood. They like their apartment. And um Sometimes they're going to have to find another situation um, that would be reasonable for them uh, to be in, but it's quite complicated. We get a lot of those phone calls. We've had a lot of phone calls recently of people who are about to be evicted because they're back on their rent because of a lot of different reasons. They, their car broke, so they can't get to their job and they can't get to their job, so they don't have any income. It right. kind of gets to be a really bad cycle. And so different agencies in Framingham, along with the Callahan Center, we all try to see how we can be helpful to somebody to improve the quality of their life. Yeah. And so and so if a person it has one of those problems, I get I hear about this a lot because my wife is very involved in Marlboro and in it's called the St. Vincent de Paul Society out of our yeah. out of our church. And so last year, I think they gave sixty thousand dollars in assistance, 40,000 of that was dealing with rent issues, was yeah, dealing with rent right. issues. And I, and, and, and I know that there's that same, you know, there's this a kind of a set of players in, in Marlboro. And I guess my question is now, if, if you're a senior dealing with any of those issues, are you the first person to call? I mean, is this I, what, what I want, what I want, want to call a one kind of a one-stop shop or at least a, a portal into these other players? Yeah. Um, yes, that's the great no. challenge is just, you know, kind of figuring yeah. out where do you start, you know, if you've got this problem? You can always start with us and we will have you go to the right person to speak to. We'll let you know who to speak to, what the phone number is. We can call with you. The Community Development Office has COVID funds to help people with their mortgages and their rent. They got to go through their process, but we can help get all their documentations in order and in line and help them do the application. Um, We don't issue the money. Community Development does, but um, we all work with each other fairly well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's a wonderful thing, because, of course, if I'm even for me, the last thing I want to be doing is forms. You know, I just I feel like I'm, I'm so over doing forms, you know. And, and so the, to, the notion of not only being able to ha- talk to somebody about this, but also actually ha- being able to have somebody help you figure out how to do it is just a, a huge deal. Right. Arthur, I thought lawyers invented forms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, but that, and that's and we did. And we did. Well, some of us did. Those are the ones that we don't like. 
I still, I still, I was just talking to a friend because we were doing this, this, there was going through this lease and this guy was like, oh, this lease is so cumbersome. And I said, I remember that we were, we were at law school. There were three of us at BU and one of us at Harvard and, 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 and we had to read our lease. Right. Right. Nobody wanted to do it. You know, it was like, just sign the bot, just sign it. Just, you know, it says there are certain people who really love those, you know, mm-hmm. and certain people who love, who love doing forms. I know that we, we often talk is, you know, I do a lot of, we do a lot of work regarding mass health and we'll always tell people, you know, if you want to do the mass health application, that's okay. We'll just kind of like correct your work. We'll make sure you didn't do anything really crazy. Right. 90% of people just go, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't handle it. I don't want to look at this thing. You yeah. just, you just, that's not, that's most, a lot of the stress. Yeah. Is just having to fill out yeah. the form, you yeah. know, and, the other and being thing worried is, that you're going to fill it out wrong. You know, if you don't know it, right? yeah. you don't want to get surprised. The other thing is a lot of people are uncomfortable using a computer and doing an application online oh. and submitting it. I'm now comfortable doing that. I wasn't always. But that's another, you can't get a paper copy. You have to do it online. You have to upload your documents online. That is overwhelming and stressful to a lot of older adults. It, right. it just is. So you we know, can be know, helpful. And it's like, Lisa, that's actually one of the reasons for this show is for those many people who, who you've got great stuff on your website, you know, but for people who don't want to get out, they're still kind of nervous because of COVID or whatever. Yeah. And they're not going to go to the website because they, because they're not going to get, they're just not going to get there. So we're hoping that they use this kind of as a as a way of kind of supplementing their knowledge about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so um, Grace, I think we should just have Lisa on like, you know, once every six months or something just to kind of update. I mean, she's just like oh, yeah. our ratings go way up whenever she's on. Everybody <laughs> loves her. Oh, and, Arthur. Like, this is terrific. <laughs> So it's all so you, Lisa, Arthur. It's all you, Lisa. Th- thank you. No, thank you so much for doing this. Thank You're you welcome. so much for doing this. And, and and Grace, you keep on kind of making things happen. And I, from your perspective at the senior center, is everything kind of going now? You know, do- doors well, are open, programs are running. Oh, absolutely. All that jazz. I'd I'd say our numbers are maybe at the fifty percent in some for some programs up to the sixty percent level. Some people are still, uh, you know, wisely cautious about what's going on with the virus we are still seeing spikes here and there Um, but people can always wear their masks if they feel more comfortable and um, we welcome people to come or even just give us a call and we can like lisa explain various other options that are available to you and i was going to say while you're there you can go see lisa this is a real treat yeah so So uh lisa uh would you provide your phone contact for people Please. who want to reach yeah. you? It's a 508-532-5980 extension 4108. Great. And I try to call people back as soon as I am able. Great. Le- thanks Lisa, so much, thank- Lisa. Thanks a million. Thank Grace, you. thanks a million for doing this. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this. You remember, don't say no to yourself. And these are your tax dollars at work. Don't throw away your own tax dollars. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much.